The four names were made public at that meeting that myself and Kathy had in relation to um, this incident. It is very well known. So don't tell me that I didn't deport four Russians. They were caught talking to Jagdeo in suspicions in relation to the elections. I could not have gotten what they were talking about. And so I decided, look, look, look. If you don't have that, the police from Special Branch and all of that, send them people away. The file was sent to the DPP with a number of recommended charges and the charges took place. Think, and the magnitude of the charges have been mind-blowing to them. These are the same people who are saying nothing will happen. So now we have gone from that, oh, so to the entire police force. This shows the system is working. So the system is working. There you go, Kaicho News. Former Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Adam Nanlal, was yesterday categorically denied any involvement in the assassination of political activist, Courtney Cameron, and said that the that an, that an ex-bodyguard of his, who police have detained, was hired several days after coming wings there. And that turned out to be a lie. I spoke to the police. And their photographs are there. They, two of them were staying at the Marriott Hotel, and two were staying somewhere at another hotel. And these were living people. Okay, so do, do, don't give the impression that it, we make up story. Ramjatan was celebrating with Settlington, who was at Soku, when they, they, they had me go into Soku on luncheon. They were celebrating at the sidewalk cafe, I think. Oasis, Oasis, Oasis. Guyana Star News, the most prominent newspaper in Guyana. April 27, 2017. Anil Nanala charged with fraud. Two million dollars of law books he stole. Anil Nanala is a thief. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Um, I, uh, Mr. Jones, I think your name is. I, I am waiting for your question. Oh, sorry about that. I was muted. So the former minister I, of I just, national can security... I, sorry, forgive me for my impertinence. That, we didn't mute you, right? You muted yourself. Oh, okay. I just want to be sure so, because I don't want the article to come out in live in Guyana that we muted you. Yeah. I, I don't report for live in Guyana, so I don't know what you're talking about. This is Livewire News Agency, sir. Oh, sorry, Livewire. So as I was saying, the example of what, what maybe the AFC should apologize for um, the former Minister of National Security, I think he's on this press conference, and the former Minister of Telecommunication, who I think you were uh, aware of, um, would have came to the Guyanese public and spoke about some Russians who um, they had found and um, had something to do, according to them, with the, the, the rigging of elections or something to do with that. Um, it was reported by the Minister of, the former Minister of National Security that these persons were deported. Um, do you think that they should have done more as persons charged with the responsibility, one security, one telecommunications, do more since these persons try to subvert democracy in Guyana? Shouldn't they apologize for that? Well, sir, sir, again, you know, I'm a little perplexed by your questions. First, you asked me if the Alliance for Change should apologize for actions during the last election. You volunteered an example is that there were it's Russians who were found and you have confirmed that they were deported. Now you're asking me whether the, uh, the government or the Minister of National Security should have done more. So clearly, if they were deported, there's nothing for the Alliance for Change to apologize for. Because if two persons were found, and they were Russian in nationality, and they were found with equipment, and they were deported, I'm not sure what else you wanted done. The fact is they were removed, and the Minister of National Security, in the exercise of his discretion with the responsibility for security of Guyana, removed them from the country, rather than put them through uh, the necessity of going to court 
simply because that might not have been the most effective means of dealing with it. Now, if you're asking me whether the, the decision to deport them rather than have them charged is a decision for which we should apologize, I beg to differ. I don't think there's anything there to apologize. So that is my response to your question. Mr. Jones, yeah, the, you the the other? I beg your pardon, sir? Yeah, I was... Uh, I... Mr. Hughes, um, just before I move on, um, in relation to your response just now, there has been no photograph, there has been no sort of evidence that these Russians actually exist or they were actually deported. We just, we, the Guyanese people were just given a press conference. We didn't see a statement from the police. We didn't see any documents that they were on so and so flight, this name, that name, Russian nationality. We saw no passports. So based on that, um, you know, that that is where I was called. Well, let me, let... Just give me that. I, I am affording you an opportunity to speak to the, to the former minister and he will address it. Sure. Please. There were four Russians who were speaking to Barrett Jagdeo in Russian at the hotel, Marriott Hotel. And based on what the police and the, the special branch indicated that they were speaking uh, certain things that they rather suspect had to do with the elections. They then came to me with a report, and the report is now in the hands of Mr. Ben. It is there, the permanent secretary has it. The four named persons, where they came from, and all of that by Mr. Leslie James. And they indicated that these persons might be doing certain things suspicious. I asked the question, what you think it was suspicious about them? Well, they said whatever they said, and these are all what you call national uh, security issues. I indicated, well, whatever it is, it's going to be very hard to prove and all of that. Please deport them if they are illegally in Guyana, because the report came to me that they are illegally in Guyana. Advertise with us and put your product, project, or campaign in front of millions of viewers all over the world and in Guyana. WhatsApp us on 347-762-665 or contact us via our website, Delta 9 Media. Both contacts are on the screen. That number again, 347-762-665. The four names were made public at that meeting that myself and Kathy had in relation to um, this incident. It is very well known. So don't tell me that I didn't deport four Russians. They were caught talking to Jack Deo in suspicions in relation to the elections. I could not have gotten what they were talking about. And so I decided, look, 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 if you don't have that, the police from special branch and all of that, send them people away. And they were sent away. I have the names in an, a report that I can still find in my, uh, my library. And the, the, their names are all there. I will try to see if it was in my, um, my, my telephone. But they were indeed, and their photographs are there. They, they two of them were staying at the Marriott Hotel and two were staying somewhere at another hotel. And these were living people. Okay, so do, do, don't give the impression that it, we make up story. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you have you have any other questions? Yes, yeah, we yeah, can I, just, just to say it out, just like a, with the previous statement uh, on the bridge, simple research, it, 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 I'm, I'm here on my computer and I just pulled it up. There's the, a the report with photos and everything like that. I, I think Mr. Jones, um, just simply did not want to do the research before he came to the conference. Um, but it's, it, it's his, um, his prior uh, prerogative. So, so Mr. Jones, um, we, 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 we're on the verge of wrapping up and we wouldn't want to be accused of excluding you. Um, you is there anything else that you wanted to ask us? No, Mr. Hughes, thank you for facilitating me and thank you for responding to the questions. And I, I thank you, sir, for being a true journalist. One love, Delta 9 family. Welcome back to the flight. 
And thanks again for flying Delta. So you heard it right there from the leader of the AFC himself and one of the founding leaders as well, Mr. Ramjatan. He is exposing some information that, look, when we thought that this corruption couldn't get any more Hollywood-like, when we thought this corruption couldn't get any more deep, allegedly, there you go. Russian spies coming in, talking in a different language, and then the special branch investigating and trying to translate the coded conversation between them and heads of state. What really going on in Guyana, buddy? But it's good to know it's a very important thing as well to stay abreast with all of these incidents and all of these things that are being revealed because guess what? Guyana is one of the richest countries in the world per capita. So if we have persons like this and if these allegations are founded, then guess what? Guyana is in a lot a lot of trouble because if you think about what's going on right now globally who is russia at odds with right now and where does that leave guyana think about the present conflict that's going on at the border with our neighbors where does that leave guyana right this situation eh, is one that we should play a whole lot of attention to and make sure that we stay updated with everything going on with this. Because the systems in Guyana are at risk. The lifestyle that we're allowed to live in Guyana, where it is peace, mostly, no war, no invasions and all of them things, could be threatened by those allegations that we just hear right there. But guess what? We can hear directly from the VP himself right now. Because in all Delta 9 media style, we always bring a neutral perspective to any story we receive. So we're going to give the VP a chance to explain to us that, look, this system right there, the policing system in Guyana, is working. And the proof that it's working is Mr. 240 and them 240 charges where he just did. Let me hear he, in his own words, explain to Guyana what's going on with the policing system right now so so what are they going after they're going after these small things not small but things that they believe will resonate for people with people so now it's the police force i already pointed out in a macro sense at the beginning of my press conference how how ill-equipped or how duplicitous it would be for anyone from the PNC or AFC to talk about interference in police work. Ramjatan was celebrating with Settlington, who was at Soku, when they, they, they had me go into Soku on luncheon. They were celebrating at the sidewalk cafe, I think. Oasis, Oasis, Oasis. Celebrating it. Yeah. They were getting direct instructions. We, the same thing. They, so not only that, but on the private criminal charges, they were seeking to, in, they were influencing members of the judiciary to take a particular action against us. We have evidence to that effect. So, if you assign special branch to work in the, a member of the special branch in the office of the leader of the opposition to come in as a volunteer to spy on what was going on there, what else is you know governments people lose governments for that sort of thing you remember watergate and all of that kind of scandal 
that you had in other countries people resign not just policemen and and politicians because that's spying on your political opponent using an arm of the state they were doing this routinely look at what happened in 2020 when how they were using the policemen to try to to toward the will of the people again some hand-picked policemen and that's all documented now and you saw it in the coi coming out so they're talking about interference and guess and coming from the past when as i said before the leadership of the police force was under apnu's control felix you know felix was there felix became an executive member of that party this close connection historically had been linked to the pnc secondly on corruption itself in the top leadership of the police force you remember when granger consulted with me so he put four deputy commissioners several of those were fingered in corrupt practices or allegations of corrupt practices within the police force similar to what uh, brutus is charged with about procurement related frauds etc what was their response did anyone get charged? They fobbed it off to the police com complaints authority and then cleared the, the, the allegations. They didn't take it to Soku to have a full investigation. Soku was then going after their political opponents. Didn't take it there. So they have a long history of trying to control the police force. So that is why when I see this from the Stab Starbuck News, again, it's an editorial. So it must have come from one of those PNC people. This can only be achieved by a temporary recruitment of external leadership. They're saying we must have external leadership now. This is something that has been argued for by this newspaper extending all the way back to the 1993 murder of Monica Reese. PPP civic governments have never heeded it ne this necessity as they can't envisage losing control of the police force. If you look at the police force historically, when has the PPP been in control of the police force? If you look at even voting patterns in the early days when the votes were counted separately, you would see what has happened. But this is, we didn't want to bring in a foreign group to run the police force because we want to control the police force. It's, it's utter nonsense. It's utter nonsense. So going on in the same editorial, to have an assistant commissioner of police facing serious money laundering charges is to make a mockery of the functioning and the authority of the force. How does it begin to recover from this without radical changes? So I have here, so they're saying it makes a mockery of the functioning and authority of the force because we found our one commissioner, our Deputy Commissioner has been charged for money and money laundering and other and is facing other charges. So I recalled earlier this year, New York's police commissioner resigns amid corruption probe. Guess when this happens? happened 12th of september 2024 so they said the federal government has launched multiple criminal probes in the city government 
including Mr. Caban, the city's first Latino police commissioner. He resigned? No doubt he was forced out. But does this make the New York police, the uh, New York police de um, department, I think it's called, yes, NYPD, does this make the entire organization defunct or not being able to function? So the logic of this is can't be substantiated. In, and, and this call, the, this position is mirrored by the opposition. You see everybody saying um, this, the opposition has weighed in on, on this sort of thing about the same thing about the police force, that we need to bring in an external group to investigate first Brutus and, and now the police department, the, the entire police force. This was the opposition that was saying that the system will never work. Expressed skepticism that the PPP would allow an independent investigation. It shocked everyone that not only was there uh, an investigation done because they were hoping that it would take the same route like what they did when they were in office and that they would have something to hang their hats on. But the investigation was done. The file was sent to the DPP with a number of recommended charges and the charges took place. Think and the magnitude of the charges have been mind-blowing to them. These are the same people who are saying nothing will happen. So now they have gone from that, oh, so to the entire police force. This shows the system is working. So the system is working. Um, And that is important to us. So the vice president just gave us the insights as to the functionality of the policing force. He's explaining that, look, policing force is working how it should. The DPP office is working how it should. And everything in Guyana should be the way exactly how we're seeing it progress right now as far as the policing force is going because guess what if the vp is officiating everything and saying look it's working how it should then allegedly diana should be looking into this and trying to understand on the ground if things appear like that and then he's not no fools we could analyze if he's telling me something we should believe or if we know that the conversation there is something that we should leave alone. But guess what? There's more to come because we got Mr. Bork now calling out one of the leaders in the country as well, who is the attorney general, one of the persons that's at the top of the legal system. And he is poking another hole in the legal systems in Guyana and saying, look, the person we are up at the top there, listen to what's going on with them. Do we hear directly? from Mr. Burke himself. And if you haven't already, buddy, hit that subscription button so that you can stay updated with everything that's going on in Guyana and in the diaspora. There you go, Kaitro News. Former Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Adam Nanlal, was yesterday categorically denied any involvement in the assassination a political activist, Courtney Cameron, and said that the that an that an ex bodyguard of his, who police have detained, was hired several days after coming wings there, and that turned out to be a lie. I spoke to the police. They killed the man, and then he said, "Oh no, no, I hired this man as a bodyguard after coming wings died." There you go. 
Nanlin, Nanlal, Anil Nanlal, ex bodyguard detained, and Anil Nanlal himself was investigated for this murder. New evidence just just came to light a couple of days ago. Allegedly fingers him to the murder. There are allegations that he shot his guard and killed the guard because the guard was talking about his involvement in Rick in the last elections. I don't know. I wasn't there. But that, that was the rumor. But if he can spread lies and smear me to smear me to attempt to smear me i can say what the room is by him i mean that loud did you kill your guard your driver did you and your bodyguard kill courtney Kamiway? because there you go there is more let me tell you guys who Anil Nanlal is. This charlatan posing as Attorney General of Guyana, attacking me and making up stuff about me. I don't have to make it up. I am going to the facts. This is the Starbrook News. Guyana Starbrook News, the most prominent newspaper in Guyana. April 27, 2017, Anil Nanlal charged with fraud. Two million dollars of law books he stole. Anil Nanlal is a thief. Former Attorney General Anil Nanlal was today charged with fraudulent, fraudulently converting two million dollars in law reports that were the property of the Ministry of Legal Affairs of Government of Guyana. The charge against Nanla, who was early arrested by the Special Arrest Coordinator, was read in the courtroom by Magistrate Fabio Azur, who subsequently granted him his release on his own reconnaissance. Implicated in murder, now he's a thief, committed fraud, and he was never exonerated, never. The DPP dropped the charges because he went to every court in Guyana. Every court in Guyana to have the charges thrown out, and the court said there's enough evidence to charge him. There's more about his criminal history. I don't have time to go through them all. Let me just pull up one more. There we go, Kaichou News. November 12th, sorry, November 2nd, 2014. Death threats by Anil Nanlal. Kaicho News has received a number of threats, threats, a direct result of orchestrated plans to shut down Kaicho News. The plot became evident more shockingly glaring when Minister of Legal Affairs Anil Nanlan told a senior Kaicho News reporter during a telephone call that people with weapons would attack the offices of Kaicho News. He said he could send gunman to Kaicho News. And the man taped him. Let's see if we can pull up that tape. I don't have to make up stuff.
Bear with me. I was trying to find a recording. I have the recording somewhere, but I'll play it another day. I know I have the recording. Matter of fact, let me check something here. I may have this recording. Let's see. In my files right here. Okay, I don't have it here, but we I have the recording. I'm gonna play it another day. So this is the man. Was attacking me and writing the U.S. Attorney General as if the U.S. Attorney General is going to take away my breakfast tomorrow morning. He has a sordid, nasty criminal history from allegedly being involved in murder to fraud to terrorism, threatening a reporter to send gunmen. This is the Attorney General of Guyana. But let me say this to that let as I close. You writing the U.S. Attorney General would not save you from justice for the murder of Courtney Kamiway. Eat butterfly, sea moss powder. Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder? essential multivitamin powder made just for you this posting came after the former home affairs minister faced allegation that he authorized and managed a death squad that operated in the city and had used serving police ranks and others as members of that squad then president barrett jack dio established a commission of inquiry into the allegations against the minister who stepped down former chief justice ian chang chaired that commission and found that the commission did not receive any credible evidence that Gadraj was involved. Under the PPP, the Guyana police force has become a national security risk and a compromised entity. Recent events involving the Guyana police force and its top leadership has increased the public concerns that under the PPP, the Guyana police force is fast becoming a national security risk. You know, a lot of us educated women, we are some of the most dumbest fucking women. We are the educated and accomplished women. We are some of the dumbest fucking women when it comes to love. Because, you know, we live for love. We would take a man that ain't doing well, that ain't doing nothing with his life, and we would think that, you know what, we could make it happen, and, you know, we live for love. 